everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jen and Christian's with me and if you want to hear our thoughts on a little movie called Nightmare Cinema uh, that will soon, soon be on Shudder. I believe it's, it's, it's VOD right now. It was released by Shudder so I assume it will eventually show up on Shudder. Yeah it's probably going to be on Shudder but we saw it on VOD. Stick around. You know what, this is, you ever have one of those days where you don't want to do Jen's reviews from the grave, you don't want to do your YouTube channel because you base your whole fucking YouTube channel on honesty, and today's a day where I really don't want to be honest because the people that made this movie I'm very big fans of. I'm I, like, there. this is an anthology movie and we have a lot of directors, one in particular that I have massive hard-ons for and uh, I want to tell you people that this was really good and uh, in my positive it's not the worst anthology movie I've ever seen but if Jen's gonna be honest I was really bored with a lot of these anthologies. Uh, this this is weird. Like, okay, one thing this was this was produced, and one of the segments on the wraparound was directed by Mick Garris, who did who a I love who did a who's done a bunch of great horror movies, as Thank well as was the main showrunner for Masters of Horror from the uh, from a ways back. Yes, and this apparently was kind of a spiritual successor to Masters of Horror, and it's been in development for like twelve years. Yeah, and you can kind of show if some of the segments kind of feel like very compressed versions of a Masters of Horror episode. Like they have really good ideas, and if they and but they're so compressed down to fit a twenty-minute runtime that they kind of feel overly long with what they're trying to do, you, especially with Mick Garris, who's like, Mick Gar the, the f final segment that Mick does, I actually feel like would actually be a pretty interesting Masters of Horror episode, but since it's compressed down into 20 minutes, it feels like we're all over the place. Yeah, and we also have Joe Dante direct, and to be fair to this movie, there were a couple of segments that I didn't hate. There, there were a couple that I was like, oh my god, but there were a couple of segments that I actually really enjoyed. Like I said, Joe Dante was one of them. Um, also, we have um, uh, the guy that did um, Hard Candy, Hard Candy which have... is a favorite movie of mine. And I actually, probably out of all the segments, that would probably have been my favorite segment. But it deals with mental illness and it's a little artsy, so the, of course Jen would we like have, that one. I can never pronounce his name, but the dude who did Downrange from last year, which we really liked. We really liked, liked. As well as we like dug Midnight Downrange. Meat Train and Godzilla Final Wars, so it has a really good pedigree of directors. Yes, it does. It's just the stories, it's the writing where I have a little bit of problems, and like Christian said, maybe it's just the fact that they had to compress this. When you're in 12 years of development hell, and I hate to dog on this movie because I really am a big fan of Mike Garris. Uh, he also did another, one, another anthology movie that I really loved, uh, Tales of Halloween, which a lot of people, I seem to, again, Jen seems to be on the opposite side. A lot of people don't particularly care for that particular Halloween movie where it's one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a Halloween tradition for us to watch that every yeah, year. It, I really like it. Uh, yeah, I think it's just as good as Trick or Treat. Maybe not to, I know some people that would be sacrilege, but I enjoyed it as much as Trick or Treat. Different levels, but I did enjoy it as much. Oh. Where this one, I've seen people who seem to really, really enjoy it, and I get why. And also the special effects. It's very stylized. Um, the, the special effects are really good. Yes. It's just there's some segments, and this is true for all anthologies. Let's be most well, most anthologies. Let's be honest, where it's just a few of them. One in particular, I thought, is, are we ever gonna get to the end? Yeah, on this for me, one? it was for me, it was the second one. For you, I think it might have been the third one. Yes, it was the it was the one the religious one for me that just oh my god. For me, it was the second one because I just didn't care. Yeah, but with that said, the, the, there were probably the first segment is a lot of fun, particularly if you're a slasher fan. The first segment is probably my favorite and the one I'll give the most praise to, not just for the fact that it has really good gore effects, it has really good special effects, the score is really tight, and there is a fight scene between our survivor, token survivor girl and our token slasher in a cabin, and it's actually really well, like, really goddamn well choreographed. Like, I was in awe of how well they did that. Like, it's better than it, pretty much any Friday movie ever did with what they did with Fights Against Jason. And this is the definitely the one that is winking at the camera the hardest. This was made for slasher fans. There's a lot of humor that, you 
you know, that some people might go, oh, that's stupid, but if you're a horror fan, particularly a slasher fan, this is just going to be like a big wink at the camera, like, it's speaking to you on another level. There's a kill in it that literally feels straight ripped out of Friday Part 6, like yeah. that kind of style of slasher humor, really morbid. And it has a little bit of Evil Dead, it also has a little bit of Eight-Legged Freaks, and I like how it seamlessly transitions from one to the other. Yeah, like, that's the one where you would, where you just tell the basic storyline of what happens in that story, and you feel, how the fuck do these things correlate? But they actually fit really well, whereas some of the other ones, where you think it's pretty simple, or where it kind of has, it, or ones that have way more issues. Yes, and the, I think our next segment is uh, the one that was, I think it was directed by Joe Dante, and it's not bad, it's just kind of a mo man one, to be honest. It's about um, a plastic surgery, and um, I, I get it, it's basically, you know, basically what it's trying to tell you is this something, are you just a shallow, vain person if you do plastic surgery, which I don't have a problem with. If you have the money and it makes you feel good, then you're not hurting anybody. It, it's a mixture of like Twilight Zone's Eyes of Beholder and like Eyes Without a Face, basically. Yeah, yeah it basically is. Um, there is some good, there is some good special, all the special effects, even in the ones I didn't like, has some pretty good yes. core scenes and some pretty good. And did you, as just as a guy, um, enjoy the three tit? Well, I've seen that in, like, Total Recall and stuff. Yeah, but I mean, to just... The effects look really good. The effects look really good, yeah. Yeah, she gets um, three tits in it. Yeah. Yeah, it, um, I mean, it doesn't really have much of a story. They just kind of... Uh, it's There's not much to that particular th This one. is going to be pretty quick. I don't think we're going to go into too much detail about any of the stories. One thing I do want to mention is about here is when we get introduced to our basically our Crip Creeper equivalent of our main character of the stories, the projectionist played by Mickey fucking Rourke. And he's actually really good. He's probably the, he's probably my absolute favorite part of the whole movie because he's, you can tell he's just having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, yeah. I think he he's with some buddies. He's good friends with all of these guys. And another thing I wanted to talk about, Mick Garris talks about this too, is what he really wanted to do was try. Originally, his original vision was to try to do horror anthologies from like every you know part of the world. Yeah. But that he says it himself. That was just a little bit. He bit off more than he could chew with that. But there are a couple of directors from other countries and we you have can... a Chilean one a British one I want to say there's another one from another country but I can't remember which yeah and it, it's um a oh, lot. Uh, we have a director from Japan, Japan too. Yes, we we and so you get a very cultural a feel for that, and uh, I like that. I like that. I, I wish he could have actually done what he really originally wanted to. But yeah. like I said, this was twelve years of production hell. You know what? I will give this movie credit here because for as long as it took to get made, and it's not a trash fire at all. And no. You might, and some of you guys might find it. I found a couple of gems, even though this is not. I didn't enjoy it as much as Tales of Halloween, guys, and I hate to say that because. I fucking love Mick Garris. He's like a personal hero of mine, and I really hate that I'm not giving it a more glowing, positive review than I am. But don't take that this is a trash fire at all. This is yeah, a really no, it's actually considering a twelve it's year, solid. 12 it's year solid. development period. You would think this would be a lot less cohesive than it is, and it's actually really cohesively put together. You can tell they had a complete vision before they actually went into making it. Yeah, um, they yeah, just it, ran into issues. It, 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 it's very much like an epic, like I get Masters of Horror. Some of the some of it doesn't. Uh, some of it works, some of it doesn't. You yeah, know? and Master, of, a lot of Master of Horror episodes did that. And a lot of anthology films, you know, even the really good ones usually have one or two duds in them. That's mm -hmm. just the way it goes. Uh, the the speaking of duds, this ne the next segment was my biggest dud. It, this one, I you had fun with. This it. one, I admit, is pretty dull and not the best, but it does feature. A, a, a glorious climax that I did enjoy. Yeah, and, and, and it's about demons and a priest, and it's it's pretty, and it also, you get a very Tarantino vibe. Yes, the cli I, won't, I won't say what, what the climax is that I liked about it, but if you see it, you know exactly what I mean. It's it's almost Peter Jackson-esque. Yeah, it kind of is. I didn't, this was my least favorite one of the segment. I think Christian had a little bit more fun with it. I, I just was thinking, God, this is the one where I thought, oh my God, are we going to get out of this one? I did not like like this segment at all but the next segment of this probably my favorite one of the of the segment and I believe this is the one that was directed by our hard candy director which hard candy for some of you guys know is a really I really enjoy that movie I'm a big fan of that particular movie and this is probably the most they're, they're usually in anthologies there's always one that's a little more artsy than the rest usually you yeah. usually have a really dumb one
one, and then you have one that's a little bit more highbrow. This is definitely, out of all the segments, this is definitely the most highbrow one of them all. I don't think Christian enjoyed it as much as it I was, did. I will say, I, it, I wasn't that into it for quite a bit, but I do like how it ends. I do. It's very Lovecraftian in its end, and I did appreciate that. But yeah. it, I, I won't say it's the worst. It's actually very well done and put together. It just wasn't personally for me. I get it. It, it spoke to me on a lot of levels. It, it's about a mother and her two boys. It, it, it's all shot in black and white, which aesthetically is very appealing to me. And um, her whole vision, I'm not going to go into a lot of plot synopsis with this one, but her vision is distorted. And yeah. when you see the episode, you'll understand what I mean by that. And and it's it deals with mental illness, which I really like. I like how, you know, your mind can play tricks on you. And I love how she's screaming in a doctor's office. She's trying to get help. And she goes, well, someone just please tell me if I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. And if someone who suffers from some things like this, I you feel that way sometimes. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, I really, this is my favorite, uh, this is my favorite segment of the anthologies. Won't be for everyone, but I really enjoyed it both artistically and just what it said. It's definitely the most originally done. It's a yeah. very original idea that I, I do, I will agree with you there. It does do a lot of really cool stuff. And I do like, it kind of does a spin of, oh, is she crazy? Is she not crazy? It does a spin on that, but yeah. I really like of, yes and no. Yes, and style, and it's very style. Like, all the whole thing looks beautiful, but mm -hmm. this one in particular, I like the way it's just done. And then our last segment, which it was directed by, by, by Mike himself, um, it, it's a mixed bag. I, it, I enjoyed it, but I didn't. This is one that most feels like it was a Masters of Horror episode, that, a script that was supposed to be a full hour long that got compressed into 20 minutes, because there's a lot of ideas going around in it that I feel if you just gave it a little time to breathe, it would have worked a lot better. Mm -hmm. But that being said, it's a very interesting premise that we've seen done before, but it has a couple cool spins on it. Yes, it, it's about a kid who loses his family, and it's about life and death. Does he want to go with them, or does he want to stay? Um, one of the actresses in this kind of, I think that's what brought it down for me, one of the actresses in this uh, one was, she wasn't awful, but... She was pretty lackluster, whereas our lead in the story is actually really good. Yeah, I, I don't know, uh, give it a little bit more, or take away a little bit, and I know that's, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't, but it almost worked for me. I liked it, it was fun, but I didn't like it as much as I liked some of the other segments. It had issues with it. It's in a weird middle ground of like, if you cut out a certain element, mainly the female character in it, it might flow better. Yeah. But if you add on to that, it might be more interesting as well. So it's kind of in a weird, great middle area. Yeah, if you're a fan of The Sixth Sense, you might appreciate it. Or Jacob's way. Ladder to a degree. I got some Jacob's Ladder vibes. Yeah, I did too. It, it's not bad though. Um, Overall, I would say, can I recommend this one? Yes, I can. Um, It's, gonna, it's on VOD right now and it'll probably end up being on Shudder because Shudder was the one who made it eventually. It's not it's not bad and I feel some people might enjoy it more than I did personally but even though I didn't enjoy it as much as something as Tales from the Halloween or a Masters of Horror episode, it wasn't horrible to sit through either. I'm not feeling the best of good day guys and that might be one of the reasons mm -hmm. why a lackluster of enjoyment because I love some of these guys behind the camera. What would you give in a letter rating? I would give this a... Solid C, solid C plus, a C plus. Um, there, there were enough. There was enough good stuff there. I'm recommending it. Um, it, it just didn't wow me. Like I said, if you had, if you, if you asked me which one should I see, Tales of Halloween or this one. I would say Tells of Halloween. I, I had a little bit more fun at this one. This one has a few gems in it, but there's also some duds. This is one I would hold the remote control and maybe fast forward through a couple yeah. of segments. Yeah. What no, about you? I would give this. A, I would give this a flat B. This okay. is a. This is. I'm not this. There's no one that I would say is defectively a bad segment. They're all um, the, the priest one, one was bad for the me. ones. Well, yeah, but that's just more to your taste. Cause I like that one. I had fun with it. But yeah. it's, this is going to be ones where they're all in very different styles. So the worst one for you is going to depend on your taste in movies, basically. True, true. So, but and everything in it is actually really good. It just the main problem with this is I feel that it's all of these stories would be a little bit more interesting if they were full horror episodes of Masters of the Horror. Which is what he wanted to do in the first yeah. place, but they just couldn't. But I, I respect him. My hat's off for him. It took him 12 years to get this off the ground, and they did it, and it's not a complete trash fire. There are some gems in this one. Um, I just, but I, but this is an honest channel, guys, and will I want to pick this up if I found this in the DVD, bin, DB, the DVD bin? Probably not. It yeah. was fine to see once, but it's not something I want to see again I, I would agree with you there. It's not like a, it's not like a Tales of Halloween or even some of like the crowning achievements of Masters of Horror like Takeshi Miike's or Tom Holland's 
stuff from yeah. that show. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's it's fine. It's pretty solid. It yeah, has it's some solid interesting to see it, once. It has some interesting ideas, and if you're and if you are like us and a fan of Masters of Horror, I'd say check this out. Yeah, I would because I I, I imagine everyone's going to find at least one segment, maybe different d degrees of how much you love it or not love it. But I think you're going to find one that you can go, okay, that was pretty all right. Yeah. At the very at the worst, I think that's what most people are going to go, okay, that was pretty all right. And I think there's some people who are really going to enjoy it. Totally. So is that all we have to say about I'd Nightmare say so. Cinema? So that's all we have to say about Nightmare Cinema. Um, as always, guys, if you do happen to enjoy the content of this channel and you haven't hit the subscriber button, please hit that subscriber button because we appreciate every subscriber we get. And with that, we wish you a good day, a good evening, and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Bye, guys. Cheers.